How did an elbow compression sleeve eventually become one of basketball's most iconic fashion statements? Here's the answer, Allen Iverson. You ever wonder how Allen Iverson broke the NBA with his shooting sleeve? The iconic Allen Iverson. There are very few players in the NBA who became societal icons. Not just great players, but the center of pop culture. Like Moses Malone, he was great, but did he resonate with anybody? The high bar for icon status in the NBA is Michael Jordan. But 10 years later, the most popular man in the NBA was Philly's Allen Iverson. Iverson was the number one pick in the same draft that had Kobe Bryant, and it made sense. Dude could score at will and make defenders look silly, having the sickest handle we've ever seen. Kids worshipped the ground he walked on. Were you one of those kids? Let us know in the comments. And it wasn't just his play that made him stand out. AI had heart and he was willing to fight anybody in the NBA to prove it. Just weeks into the league, a rookie Allen Iverson got into a fight with Dennis Rodman, the NBA's resident psycho, and he didn't flinch. He was the smallest guy on the court every single night, but he carried himself like a heavyweight boxer. More than anything, he was cool. He shirked reporters, got in guys' faces, made flashy plays, and walked around with an aura of greatness. Above all, he looked the part. He looked cool. But that look isn't complete without that arm sleeve. How did the arm sleeve start? In January 2001, Allen Iverson was in the middle of his legacy-defining year. He'd already been a Rookie of the Year, an All-Star, and a scoring champ. His Sixers had made the playoffs the previous two years, bounced in the second round. He was due a breakout season. The Sixers started the year 10-0, coming out of the gates as dark horse contenders. Midway through the year, AI was an MVP favorite. This was the year of Iverson. But then he ran into some issues. Bursitis on his right elbow. It caused his elbow to swell, costing him his jumper and his handles. For a guy that thrived off mid-range shots and beating defenders off the dribble, this could have been devastating. But the 76ers trainer, Lenny Courier, had an idea. He took a compression snock and net used to protect ankles from being rolled. He cut it up, stitched it together, and put it on AI's arm. And the shooting sleeve was born. Did it actually help him play? Did it protect his arm? Hard to say, but the proof is in the game. Iverson dropped 51 points that night against the Raptors, dropping four threes on eight attempts. The Sixers got the L thanks to a big game by Vince Carter in a career year. But Iverson proved that that injury would not stop him, thanks to his new shooting sleeve. Then, the next four games, he proved it wasn't a fluke, winning four straight while averaging 33.3 points per game. AI kept that shooting sleeve on for the rest of the season, bringing a new fashion trend to the world of basketball, hip-hop, youth culture, and pretty much everywhere else. Does the shooting sleeve actually work? That's the big question. How much of the shooting sleeve is style and how much is substance? For Exhibit A, we'll look at the rest of Allen Iverson's 2001 season. Before the shooting sleeve, he averaged 28 points per game. After, 35. Bringing his season average up to 31.1, the first player to average 30 in a season since fellow icon Michael Jordan in 1996. AI wore that shooting sleeve all the way to the playoffs, where he and the Sixers earned top seeding. It was a grueling playoffs face against the reigning Eastern champ Pacers in round one. Round two, none other than those same Raptors, led by Vince Sanity, in an agonizing seven game series featuring the league's two most electric players, AI emerged victorious. He wore that sleeve all the way to the finals. The Sixers were led by sub six foot AI, matched up against the Shaq and Kobe Lakers in their height. And against all odds, they won a game. Now, they lost the series in five, but AI deserves half a ring for that fight, right? Let us know in the comments if you agree. But since then, the sleeves have become iconic in themselves. LeBron James. Everyone compares LeBron to Jordan, but LeBron's always said that Iverson was his biggest influence. Do you remember the way he gushed while hanging out with his role model in his first All-Star game? 40 minutes, 42 minutes. But you get the trophy, sweet. That's cool. Yeah. He want to. He ain't number 16 years old. 
LeBron said that AI resonated with the black community better than anyone since the civil rights era. LeBron's taken that legacy and tried to do the same. LeBron has said that AI is the reason that he wears a headband. And yes, a shooting sleeve. LeBron's worn shooting sleeves for most of his career. Sometimes on the right arm, sometimes on the left, sometimes on both. Now, we don't need to go through the King's credentials here, but suffice to say, whatever he's doing has worked. Part of LeBron's greatness comes from his availability. Up through 2018, he barely missed games. And then in that 2018 season, his 15th year in the league, when he was supposed to be washed up, he led the league in minutes and total points scored while not missing a game. Then in the postseason, he did the same thing, even though he was coming off seven straight trips to the finals. Nowadays, he misses a lot of games, but he produces at a level completely blowing away anything that's been done in year 20. How much of that longevity comes from keeping his elbows compressed? Dwight Howard. There are no two different players in NBA history than Dwight Howard and Allen Iverson. One thrived because of his size and strength, and the other one, despite it. One was tough as nails, the other one was not. Even so, AI had an impact on Dwight Howard. For most of his career, Dwight wore two sleeves, probably more of a fashion statement than anything. But you gotta admit, it's a good look, right? Dwight was a low post player who was so physically advantaged that players had to scratch and claw to keep him from going to the basket. Wearing sleeves on both arms probably protected his skin from scratching. Dwight was looking to protect his arm from scratches, while Steph was looking to protect his previously injured shoulder. Steph Curry. This past year, he wore a full arm sleeve for basically the whole year, going all the way up to his shoulder. It started in December, when he injured his shoulder swiping down at the ball for a steal. After a stint on the injured list, he came back sporting this new look. He finished the year just shy of 30 points per game, shooting 42% from three, an improvement on a career low 38% last year. So did the sleeve help? And despite what this joke Bleacher Report post says, Carmelo Anthony did not wear a shooting sleeve to cover up conspiracy theorist tattoos. But he did once say that he tried as hard as possible to cover up his tats for his mom's sake, giving us another reason to wear shooting sleeves, covering up tattoos. But seriously, do they help? In 1987, the American Journal of Medicine did a study that found compression garments, particularly in the legs, lowered blood lactate levels and blood pooling. In 2007, after the shooting sleeve boom, the Journal of Sports Science did another study. They had a group of men wear compression clothing while running a 10K, finding that measurable muscle soreness was reduced. They've been proven to increase blood flow, keep joints from discomfort, and in some cases, reduce the risk of injury. So yes, they do help. Wearing a shooting sleeve can prevent long-term injury during a grueling 82 game season. But for the most part, Shooting sleeves are popular because they look cool. And the only reason they do? Because the coolest player in modern NBA history wore one. Did you wear a shooting sleeve as a kid? Do you still wear one playing pickup? Let us know in the comments and then check out this video of Steph going off when people talk trash. Listen to the wrong opinion, useless NBA trivia, and garbage rankings for more NBA content.